Now we come to the, uh, the main reason that we're all here, and that's to hear from our speaker today. I want to tell you a personal story about why I endorsed Bill Bowling early on in this process. When I was a candidate three years ago running for the Board of Supervisors, Bill Bowling had a fundraiser in the district I was running in. And I was, I was a total unknown. No one knew who I was. Bill had never heard of me. But he was campaigning in my district and has been, dis and has been displayed so many times the Lieutenant Governor did something very selfless and said, sure, why don't you bring in your, uh, you know, bring the supervisor candidate in to, be, to participate in that fundraiser, let him meet people, you know, get a little name recognition, some FaceTime, all of that. He didn't have to do that. This is a man who understands the notion of promoting conservative values, promoting people of like mind, and doing things for the community, not for his own advantage. That's someone that I want leading this state. He proved his selflessness again just this year, actually it was last year, when he decided not to run for governor and instead decided to run for re-election to the office of lieutenant governor. You very rarely ever see that level of selflessness in politics. This is someone who set aside his own personal ambitions and said, you know, for the good of the commonwealth, for the good of the conservative cause, I'm going to put things on hold for a little while, and I'm going to stay where I am and serve the Commonwealth the best way I know how, and right now that's by being Lieutenant Governor and being re-elected to the office of Lieutenant Governor. This is a man who I felt very fortunate to have as a friend, and who I feel very privileged to have serving us in Richmond, making sure that Tim Kaine stays in line as much as he can keep him in line. Please give a very warm welcome to the current and next Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Bill Bowler. In, uh, in Charlottesville and in Albemarle County, and to thank you all for coming out. What an incredible crowd. How far back over there is our group? Wow. Give yourselves a round of applause. That's pretty hard. I, I will tell you, this is the kind of excitement and enthusiasm that we are seeing all across the state. Uh, I think people are tired of losing. We're tired of seeing our country and our state go in the wrong direction. We are ready to win again. And we're going to win again. Look, I want to, uh, want to thank you all for coming out. Thanks for everything you do to help support the work of our Republican Party here in Charlottesville and in Albemarle County. And Christian, thank you for your leadership. Uh, Keith, thank you for your leadership. Uh, all the other chairmen and, and local elected officials that are here today, uh, thank you all for being willing to kind of step into the arena and get involved. I, have, I started out, my very first job in politics was as chairman of the Hanover County Republican Committee, so you just never know where you might end up. <laughs> my second job was as a member of the Board of Supervisors kid in Hanover County, so you never know where you might end up. And then, of course, I went on and spent 10 years in the State Senate, but, but we appreciate so much everything that you all do, the local party leaders, the local elected officials, the Republican Women's Club groups, the county committee members. It really is all about grassroots politics, and that's what this is about. So I just want to thank you for all of that. I want to thank you for sending uh, Rob Bell to the Virginia House of Delegates. You have a great delegate. And, uh, he, uh, he was over there. I think he told me he was going to leave early and go knock on doors, and that's fine. He needs to be out knocking on, on doors. But I want to thank you all for sending Rob. You have a great delegate. He does a wonderful job. Sometimes when you, you know, you're down there and you have 100 members of the House and 40 members of the Senate, trying to figure out where everybody is on any particular issue is about the closest thing to hurting cats that I've ever had to try to do. But there are certain people that you never really have to worry about. You know, they're always going to be there. They're always going to be casting the right vote. And you have that kind of a delegate 
uh, in Rockville. And I want you all to go out and work really, really hard this November to make sure you send Rob Bell back to the Virginia House of Delegates for two more years. We need him there working for you all uh, at the Capitol. Let me introduce just a couple of people. I'm delighted today to have my bride, Jean Ann, traveling with me today. Stand up here. Jean and I we're now kind of neighbors of your all's. We're now uh, we are, we have a little place over in Nelson County. And uh, in fact, we were over there yesterday, and if you would have seen me this time yesterday, I had on my waders and my baseball cap, and I hadn't shaven for a couple days. I was out catching trout. Now, let me rephrase that, trying to catch trout uh, in the Ty River and the South River, and we were just having a great time. And in fact, we're heading back over to uh, uh, Wintergreen when we're done here today. We're going to take a weekend to get some, uh, some catch up on some reading and some napping and a bunch of stuff like that, and then Sunday uh, we're off to uh, Southwest Virginia uh, for a few days of campaigning, but it's just wonderful to have Jean Ann here. And then also a member of my staff who is with me today, I want to introduce to you all, this is Adam Irby, back there, he's done his environmental work. Adam is a UVA man. It was um, hard for a Hokie like me to hire him, but I did it anyway. <laughs> Uh, Adam is a very fine uh, young man who's taken a semester off from UVA this year to work on the campaign. And uh, Adam, good. if you need anything, see Adam. He can get it taken care of for you. Well, my friends, look, I'm going to take just a few minutes this morning, and uh, Rachel's going to give me the signal over there when we run out of time. But I want to talk to you a little bit about this campaign that we have coming up. Uh, you know, I've been around politics now for, um, I don't know, I guess about 20 years, if you go all the way back to the chairman of the Hanover County uh, Republican Committee days. And, and in every election in those 20 years, I've heard somebody stand up and say something like the following. This is the most important election in the history of, and then you just insert whatever the election is. So I don't want to sound too melodramatic about that, but I will tell you all in no uncertain terms, I believe that this is a critical election in the future of our party, in the future of our commonwealth, and I believe uh, in the future of, of our country. You know, when you look back over the last few election cycles that we've gone through, it's easy to kind of get discouraged. I mean, let's be honest about it. Uh, we've been on a rough ride here for the last few years as a party. We've lost the last two governor's races. We lost the last two U.S. Senate races. We've seen our Republican majority in the state Senate go away. Our Republican majority in the House of Delegates has contracted. Uh, last year, um, I know it broke my heart, as I know it did yours, to see us lose some great representatives and congressmen like Congressman Virgil Goon yeah. uh, here in the 5th District and Thelma Drake in the 2nd District. To see Virginia vote Democratic in the presidential campaign for the first time in 44 years. Um, you know, it's easy to look at that and be discouraged. But what I want you to take home with you today, it's okay to be disappointed about elections passed. Because frankly, I think that's why there's such excitement and enthusiasm. You know, people look at those elections and they're disappointed, but they're ready to win again. So it's okay to be disappointed about elections passed. It is not okay to be discouraged. Because the truth is we've only got 180 some days left until election day. There is a lot of work to be done. There is no time to be discouraged. This is a time to be united. This is a time to be working together. This is a time to be focusing on the things that unite us and not on the things that divide us. Because the truth is, if we're going to win in November, starting today, we've got to all be rowing the boat in the same direction at the same time. And I've got news for you. When we do that, when Republicans work together, when we stick to our conservative principles and values, when we relate them to the issues that families care about, we cannot be defeated. We will win.